I'm always on this weird rocket. It's so people can see my sick ninja skills in action. Whoosh! Look at that, it does say record in red letters. Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh Weekly. As always, I'm Robo, and oh, as you can tell by the featured image, today is a bit Marvel heavy, but not too much. I don't know, when I made that image, I thought, wow, Marvel front and center, and then I'm going through the list right here, and it's all towards the end, so I, I don't know what happened. Pretty pictures make me hoo-hoo-hoo. <laughs> the, the Pillsbury Doughboy, what? What I'm trying to say is, Let's talk about some toys. First off, why you Street Fighter fans feel you have to correct me when I came up with perfectly good backstories as to why Ryu went evil. Ryu succumbs to the, the Satsue no Hato? Please. Mine were way better than that. Anyway, we saw a tease for it last week. This week, Storm Collectibles put up the full photo spread pre-order pages for their Ultra Street Fighter 4 evil Ryu. And it's mostly what we speculated from that original tease. Big beefy body with both entry and exit wounds on the torso. Awesome looking fire effects, hands, heads, and Hadouken. Which if it were up to me would be a piece of his soul. The more he fights, the more he uses his soul up until there's nothing left. And then the, the dead husk of Ryu must reach in, pull out his dead heart, and turn to the side of evil. Hoping one day to redeem himself. His heart is put away uh, in a a mystic jar. Oh, do you hear a heartbeat? No, I must continue the fight. Capcom, call me. I got you covered. $90 set for August. Would you look at that? The Spiro Studio Animal Warriors of the Kingdom Kickstarter is fully funded. You know what that means? Animal Warriors for everyone. Not only that, it is burning through the stretch goals fast. On Monday, it was sitting at about $106,000. A couple of days later, $144,000. That means Blight is unlocked along with a head pack and some weapons. Now it's racing towards the Kickstarter exclusive Vero Atlas. And Jason's not stopping there. He's just showing possibilities for more and more stretch goals. The further it goes, the more we get. If you haven't jumped in yet, go get some. They look like awesome toys. The link's in the description. There just was nothing. Not enough heresy last week, so let's pile on some more and talk about the Bandai Warhammer 40k White Scars Intercessor. I didn't even realize Bandai was still hammering away at this line. <laughs> Get it? Hammering. I did review the first figure in this series, the Primaris Intercessor, and while I liked it well enough, it just seems to fall short of that $100 price tag. Good engineering, fun figure, but the finish doesn't look like the prototypes and it seems a bit small overall. Then again, I paid $10 or $20 less for Star Wars and Marvel figures that don't use near the amount of plastic this does, so what do I know? Nothing. Robo don't know nothing. Robo don't know a thing. Comes with bolt rifle, combat knife, alternate hands, and a whole lot of attitude appropriate for this character's general demeanor. Robo don't know. Like I said, $100 should ship in November. And if you collect this line, now there's vanilla to go along with your blueberry and your lemon and your lime. <laughs> After 200 episodes, you would think I wouldn't bunch up a whole lot of Robo don't know together, but Robo never learns. Here's the Good Smile Company Figma Cyberpunk 2077V. You guessed it, I've never played this game. Robo don't know a thing. But I really, oh, really like the look of this figure. It's got a cool, random, futuristic, civilian look to it. You can stick it anywhere. And if your cool, random, futuristic civilian needs to get rowdy, bam, spider claw arm. Or poppy uppy gunny army. But if you don't want to use those, it also comes with some standard issue guns that look like real life weapons. The kind of premium content you can't get with a lot of action figures these days. Keep poking the bear. V won't be hurting for transport either with the release of the Figma X-Ride Yaiba Kusanagi bike. I'm sorry. It's customizable with all these extra decals you can put on however you want. And the sheet won't say sample on them. This is just so people won't print them off and stick them and make their own decals. The figure is about $92. The motorcycle is about $78 and they're scheduled for the first of next year. Sticking with sweet, sweet rides, a while back Flame Toys announced their Furai model kit, G.I. Joe, Storm Shadow, and Snake Eyes in kind of a more classic inspired look. And now, oh wait, 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 don't get too excited. I started that off, but it's not actually about the figures. It moves into 
transportation territory here too. This week Flame Toys announced their Furai models, Snake Eyes Speed Cycle and Storm Shadow Arashi Kagi Cycle. Now these look cool and I'm all over model kits because I actually haven't built one in a while, but I have a sneaking suspicion that Flame Toys are going to put these out first to kind of test the waters. Less moving parts, less cost involved, less risk to put these out first, see how they sell, and if they do well, go for the figure model kits. At least that's what I'm hoping. Or, well, I'm hoping that they actually just throw the figures out there and then the motorcycles come after, but these already have color to them, the figures didn't. But I have no problem being proven wrong, Flame Toys. Bring it on. No hard info yet, just pretty pictures. I still haven't seen an American werewolf in London. Boo this man! Boo him! Um, Get him off the mm -hmm. stage! Boo! Right. This week NECA solicited the nightmare demons from that movie and, oh, that head looks badass. Oh uh, well, well, that one does too. I, I really like that. And that one is awesome. Oh, well, that one, that one's okay. Can't win them all, especially when it comes to personal preference, right? I don't care for that one. This will be sold as a single figure, all four heads included, at all your favorite online retailers. That does mean that if you get four of these figures, you're going to have a lot of extra heads laying around, but that is way better than this being exclusive to somewhere, or it being a four-pack and losing out on the customers that only wanted one or two. Yeah, this seems like the best route to go. It is odd that these see solicitation before the actual werewolf though, right? $30 is supposed to hit in August. Speaking of summer releases, the Gargoyles Ultimate Goliath has sold so well that NECA has announced a cutoff date for pre-orders. I'm guessing they're doing this so they don't oversell. They get the allotments manufactured, get them out on time, and then deal with <laughs> whatever comes next. It kind of sounds like a bad thing on the customer end, but it's a very good thing. That means this may be a very healthy line. Good sales means confidence on both ends. Neko will go ahead and show those five prototypes that were announced this week with more in development. Things get a rolling. This week they announced that they're hoping to show one a month. There's nothing wrong with something new every 30 days. Plus it's Goliath. You gotta think that he'll see a re-release down the road. Maybe extra accessories or different accessories. Maybe a stone paint job. There's so many possibilities here. We've been kind of trained to check the NECA socials on Tuesdays for some kind of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles tidbit and this week was no different. We'd already seen glimpses of the 1990 movie Oroko Saki and Hamato Yoshi 2-pack, one with very shadow, very overcast, the other with Rat Splinter checking on his master. This week, full-on reveal. Yes, Yoshi seems to use the pants from the 1990 movie Shredder that's already been released, but what do you want from a character that has several seconds of screen time in a movie? In fact, in my long list of 1990 movie character needs, Yoshi wasn't high up, but now that I see him in plastic form, which I never thought would be a reality, do whatever you have to. Another character for that shelf? Now, are we having some kind of likeness rights with Sam Rockwell? Because... I need that figure too. Jeremy Padauer at Jazzwares recently posted up the digital renders for their AEW Unrivaled Series 6, and while more than half of this wave is redo characters, they do look good, and this gives customers a chance to actually find them at a store. Just a chance though. Very slim one. Jericho is the first of those redos, but they did change up his head into more of one of his trademark yelling looks. MJF looking cocky as all hell, and why wouldn't he? He recently pulled off a double heel swerve that worked out so perfectly that I didn't even see it coming. Not that you have to really work hard to get one over on old Robo, but you know what I mean. If you saw it, you know what I'm talking about. The Lucha Brothers also get another go with Phoenix getting a different head with the mouth closed and I'm guessing different colors on his ring gear and I would probably say the same about Penta. Closed mouth, maybe different colors, different belt flap. Oh and he does get the full-on Cerro Miedo this time. The two new wrestlers in the line though is Jake Hager who finishes out the inner circle. I think. And then there's Sheeta, who is the current AEW Women's Champion, as I record this. No release info yet, but Series 5 is still scheduled for the end of May, so I'm guessing sometime in the summer. Now, can we get a Britt Baker and Thunder Rosa 2-pack, please? Remember back to Mezco Toys Fair, where they showed off a damn near comic accurate 112th Collective Wolverine? At the time, we figured it would be a wait, but no, Mezco put that up for solicitation this week. But the first words I saw were a deluxe steel box edition, which made me go, oh no, 
I don't want to see the price on this thing. I was clicking around trying to find it. Oh. Oh my god, 150 bucks? This is some bullshit. Mezco always adding extra stuff that I don't need for my display to jack the price up. But then I started looking at the pictures and that, that sentinel base with the light up eyes and the eye comes out, Wolverine can hold it and stuff. And the claw effects and the extra hands, the inclusion of bone claws, and then eight different heads to go along with it i guess i'm in because that's kick-ass it just feels like it tips the scales over into the worth it column at least for me hell there's even options for the belt buckle that you can swap out the x or the actual buckle or the whole belt itself for a more modern look it still has some little mezcofications like the riveted flaps on the gloves the matching shoulder pads with the little silver dots on them the extra seams on the boots but those flourishes are so minor, I don't even notice them. I'm just looking at the overall figure going, oh, that scratch is that neat, I think. Gotta get some grops out of the way, though, at least looking at the initial pictures. The blue on the pleather trunks don't quite match any of the other blues on the costume, and it just makes it stick out to me. And then probably one of my oldest complaints with Mezco in general, there's no texture on the head or the neck to make it blend in with the cloth goods on the torso. It's just obviously soft goods plastic. But still, I already bought it, so what's it matter? I've already given you money, give me some plastic, eventually. I think this is due out at the end of the year, but we'll see about that. I'm figuring it'll roll into next year. Sentinel's Marvel fighting armor line has been hitting kind of fast and furious, hasn't it? First there was Iron Man, I, of course, obviously. It's a fighting armor line. You're gonna put Iron Man in it. But I didn't know that the Iron Spider-Man figure had already been released. It kind of snuck out on me. Iron Captain America is set to release this month, and then Iron Wolverine is in, when is it? Oh, June. And the way these have been releasing, I don't doubt those dates. But I'm a strong, strong man, and I have managed to avoid the allure of armored up Marvel superheroes until this week. You know Uncle Robo is a complete sucker for a good looking Deadpool? Any form, any fashion, a half-naked Figma version, a too big for my collection, but I got it anyway, movie hot toy, a cloth-covered Mezco, the plethora of Marvel Legends, and now a sleek, sexy, armored up Merc with a mouth. Give me all of them. I'll admit, I have been wanting to give this line a test drive because I've heard some good things, some bad things, but we knew Wade was coming, so I was waiting for that. If it's cool, I'll grab one or two or 15 of the others. If not, I've got a neat little individual Deadpool to put somewhere in my display. And it's okay if you've been ignoring my rambling ass and staring at the pretty promotional pics this whole time because Sentinel just did a fantastic job of capturing the feel, the essence in these poses. But they didn't add my favorite promotional pick from Sentinel and that's the 80s prom pose. They did it with Wolverine, they did it with Spider-Man, I had to go do it myself with Deadpool. Baby, you and me got a groovy kind of love. Include swords, shuriken, alternate hands, and pistols, but none of the pictures actually show the pistols out of the holsters. <laughs> Around $100 scheduled for August. Finally, even though Hasbro is holding a huge fan fest next Friday, it didn't stop the Marvel team from throwing out some goodies this week. I didn't know that April 1st, besides being April Fool's Day, is also April Pool's Day or April Deadpool Day. So with that, we saw the re-release of the X-Men Legends retro carded Deadpool. No changes as far as I can tell, but if you missed out on this the first time around, here is another chance at that because <laughs> it's Deadpool, any form, any fashion. Along with that came the Marvel Legends fan channel exclusive retro carded <laughs> webman. When I first heard about this, I thought, meh, whatever. And then when I saw the pictures, I was like, meh, oh my God, I like the colors on that. I may need that. And then I did a little research and it's just too wacky to skip. This character made one appearance in Spidey Super Stories number 25 back in the 70s. And this is a comic that was in conjunction with Electric Company kind of aimed towards kids. This evil mirror version of Spider-Man was created by Dr. Doom who then lured Spidey back to Doom's lair where another mirror version was created for a whole page. Spidey crashed through the mirror and the two evil versions just disappeared. Like I said, they only appear for two or three pages, but you know what this means, right? This is an army builder. You gotta get two of them for Webby 1 and Webby 2. But if you're not interested in this, or you don't know the character and don't care, or if it's just too silly for your serious toy collection, 
it's a fan channel exclusive. It's not part of a wave. It doesn't have a build a figure piece. No one is forcing you to buy this. It's not taking anything away from any other release. So you can just whoop, pass on by. But then there's also the Walmart exclusive Marvel Legends Falcon and Winter Soldier John Walker Captain America. What's with Walmart and Captain America? That's just weird. It just seems like every unique version of Captain America we get, we gotta go to the big blue store for it. Either way, love them or hate them, you gotta admit that this figure captures the look from the show perfectly. Well, I won't say perfectly. There's always something off. It's a $20 toy, so I mean, there you go it still looks great but it does nail the look of the head and it also comes with an alternate unmasked head that you could maybe use for a custom x-men banshee that wasn't my idea that came from the chat on monday foosh live on twitch and i, I don't know i can't help not looking at it like that now the shield is the newer updated look from the show but also notice trigger finger hand and there seems to be a gun in the holster on the hip that they try to cover up a lot and we never see it out of the holster. <sighs> it is awesome that they matched up the packaging that we saw in episode two of Falcon and Winter Soldier where the fan is handing it down to Walker, but I think in the show that was a 12 inch figure. Either way, Marvel Legends. Walker is $23 set for August, Webman is $23 in October, and then Retro Deadpool is $30. November. And that's it for this week. At least I think it is. If not, we'll swing back around, check it out on Monday Foosh Live on Twitch or next week's episode of the Weekly. If you're interested in seeing any of these pictures up close without me all, Robo don't know a thing. I'll be posting all of that along with links to pre-orders, more information on the Foosh Front page Saturday at noon. But if you can't wait that long, Links are in the description. Like I mentioned a minute ago, next Friday is Hasbro Fan Fest. And from what I hear, they're gonna be dropping a ton of stuff on us. We're already seeing some leaks for Marvel Legends and some Star Wars information, but I, I like to see the presentation. I like to see the pretty promotional pictures. I like to see the wee new toys. They're also doing some kind of Pulse Premium pre-show Thursday night. Who knows what's gonna go on there? I feel like there's gonna be some toys. So next week's weekly schedule, it may be messed up. I may have to go through it and do something on Thursday or Friday morning and then come back around, catch all the Hasbro stuff on Saturday or finally break down and do a live stream on the main Foosh channel. I think Veebs has his internet a going. We may try something there, but it doesn't matter. We're gonna be talking about toys somehow, some way, somewhere. But if you enjoyed this Foosh Weekly, comment, like, subscribe. Much, much love to the plus. If you're interested in seeing videos early or just in a position to help out the channel, patreon.com or wherever you may be watching this, I'll always catch you on the foosh. Another thing we talked about on Twitch, but I didn't put here because it's so leaked and I, yeah, I want to see the pictures, but the McFarlane toys, apparently six inch, 66 Batman stuff. I'm interested, even if it turns out to be seven inch, I, I just don't have a good collection of those. And then the seven inch spawn stuff, which I think was found in the GameStop computer earlier today. That's looking good too. I'm hoping to see pictures of that next week, sometime soon. 